it seems like every day in real estate, there's a new wire scam, wire fraud version of somebody trying to get a hold of your money and then vanish into the nether with it. Let me tell you the new version that cropped up this week here in North Carolina. If you're a realtor and you've seen this in your state, feel free to comment. Let me know where you're seeing it. This was my first time, and like they say, you never forget the first time. So I had buyers in California buying a house in North Carolina for obvious reasons. We'll just call them economic refugees. And so they had their house under contract. They were doing the closing remotely with mail away and with notaries. It's all possible now. We love technology from that perspective. They had their money sent to North Carolina to the closing attorney. Everything all good so far. Like many smart buyers, they sent a little more than the estimated closing proceeds in case there was a change at the last minute on the closing disclosure, and that would save us having to spend a couple of days trying to chase around small dollar amounts. So after we closed, recorded, went to the courthouse, and names are changed, my buyers get their house, whoop, whoop, welcome to North Carolina, there was excess money. The attorney reached out to my clients and said, how do you want to get it? Some people, if you're local, might stop by the attorney's office and pick up a check. My folks being in California said, please mail us a check. We don't do wires. So can we just applaud my clients for being the super smart people who did not want to get at risk of a wire scam in any way, shape, or form? So they'd never provided wire instructions. They never got involved in any of that. The attorney said, of course, we'll mail you a check. They got all the details, verified the address. Everything's handled. The next day, my clients got a phone call on their landline. All right, so first of all, let's just discuss how they got their personal information. I don't know how they got it. I didn't provide it to anybody. The attorney didn't provide it. The attorney brother-in-law of my clients feels that it may have been a compromised email system somehow. Regardless, the scammers got my client's phone number, y'all, and they called them and said, we have this overage. We need your wire instructions to send it to you. Now, if you're thinking, but Lee Brown, they're just going to have to send money. That's not how the scammers work. What the scammers do is they will initiate something and then they will cancel it. And then we start acting like the money got gone and they will get the $3,000 and vanish out into the world. And so you just never, ever acknowledge anything when these people call you except to trace the phone number, which you'll find out is a dummy line going somewhere imaginary. So my folks reached back out to the attorney and said, we didn't give you wire instructions. There's no wire being sent. And the attorney said, what are you talking about? We're sending you a check. So my clients figured out very quickly someone was impersonating the attorney's office. Here's what you need to know from this. First of all, you can stop a scammer in their tracks. You don't have to fall for this. So trust your intuition, trust your back of your neck when the hair stand up. That's a moment to be aware. Second of all, you really shouldn't be using wires in real estate right now. Your closing attorneys and title companies have probably put the kibosh on wires because of the rampant use and scams that are going on. It's crazy. And because they can get wire instructions and impersonate, it might be a small dollar amount, it might be a huge dollar amount, but regardless, it does not belong to the scammers. And then I want you to know this as well. If you're a realtor, you need to be telling your clients, don't trust any wire, be very, very nervous and very cautious. That's one reason that when you're working with us, we're gonna make sure we have a specific contact person at the closing attorney's office and we'll get their cell phone number so you can call them and say, did you initiate this? Are you involved in this? And because my clients double checked, they were able to stop the scammer in their tracks. However, they're now getting harassed because the scammer got their home address and their phone number. So they're gonna have to put everything on lockdown. And I don't get any money from this, but I will just tell y'all, I have LifeLock on my house and my family. You should probably get LifeLock on yours too. So at least you get an alert if there are shenanigans going on. But you, we now know that the scams are not just happening during the deposit phase. They're not just happening at closing. They're happening after closing. This is crazy. It seems like it never ends. And I don't know about y'all, but I kind of feel like if these scammers would apply their ingenuity and their creativity to something helpful to humanity, they could probably help us solve the affordable housing crisis or maybe even cure cancer. I don't know. But right now their brains are directed in a negative position. So let's stop the wire scams, stop the wire fraud. And most importantly, as a real estate broker, or as a closing attorney or a title company, all of y'all should have a data privacy and security policy so that you know exactly what steps you would take in your office if something were to happen. We're very grateful to have a policy here where we do check and double check 
and we know we're going to make sure this attorney has one as well, but I feel they do because they got everything on lockdown. Anyway, there's a cautionary tale for the day. Leave me in the comments if you've experienced something similar or if you've just got some good tips and advice.